Pink Fohawk is a crass, vulgar, violent, raunchy podcast that is meant for immature adult audiences only. Content warning is available in the description. Welcome to... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 great. I was ready for it, dude. I was so ready. I know. I laughed at you guys. It's just, you accepted it. You just went with it. Thank you for just going with that. Take me away, Ben. Take me away. Welcome to Pig Falk, everybody. Dan, Chris. Ah, so good to be here. So good to be it's here. So good to be back. Would you say it's been a tick? It's been a, it's been a double tick. It's been a few ticks. Jesus. To the fans, we have been recording since like last fall, but it's just taken us some time to get our feet underneath of us. <laughs> That's we ridiculous. Got, it is let's fucking just, rolling. Let's bask in that statement for a second. That's fucking <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, it's outrageous. I just want to say to all of our fans, thank you for your fucking monkish patience. Definitely. A few things. I'm just going to get these right off the top. We got a subreddit, people. We got a YouTube channel. We got a Discord. Join them up. Yes, we do. Chat with us. We're very, very active. And guess what? I put some shit on YouTube now, so there's stuff to look at. All of our episodes are on YouTube now. All of our episodes are on YouTube. Man. Um, we've also got a few videos about Shadowrun on there that you might enjoy. So join up. A lot of hard work has gone into this. <laughs> ben has. Ben has been doing all the work. <laughs> well, it's, that's that's part of it. It's like we were trying to find times when we could all be free, and that's obviously been tough. Ben's so been it, holding like fucking counsel with with Tom Dowd on on YouTube, like have yeah, like talking wild, Shadowrun with people coming in, and like it's fucking crazy. We have a Shadowrun Second Edition book club. People join our YouTube channel, and you can see how to join. And there's some videos we record of it as well. So and Tom um, makes regular appearances, doesn't? And yes, the Tom Dowd. What a gentleman. The prolific writer that Tina Bone Meal loves his writing. Yeah, she can't get enough of his... his, his uh... Night's Pawn, was it? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. <laughs> I prefer Burning Bright, but Night's Pawn's good. All of his novels, I, I'm gonna... Tina calls them novellas. Very respectfully. What are we talking about? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Not kidding. Not kidding. But Tom's a, Tom's Just a gentleman kidding. and a scholar. <laughs> he is. He's been really fucking awesome. So join up. Check that out. And uh, yeah, let's get this shit going. All right. So give us some intros. Who wants to go first? Do it, John. Do it. <laughs> I'm just going to riff. John Anderson, typical yuppie businessman. He's down on his luck. He's, he's uh, well, he's not really down on his luck anymore, <laughs> but he used to be, he used to be a big time deal at a big mega corp. And now he's out there freelancing, trying to keep up his expensive habits. And he's doing quite well. He's doing all days. right. He's doing just fine. He's got his own following. He's an, he's an influencer, if you will. <laughs> I like that. And yeah. he's also pulling down a lot of money on these runs. Oh yeah. So he's keeping up. With the lifestyle. I want to see what kind of fucking bank we're looking at in season two. Oh, there's some weird shit coming up, so fucking strap in. <laughs> strap on and strap in. Strap in and all <laughs> strap on. <laughs> it's actually what happens in John's cult is he makes all the wives strap on and peg their husbands. That's what's that's the uh <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Exactly. <laughs> Tina Bone Meal. Hey, Shadow Punks. My name's Dan. I play a Tina Bone Meal. Uh, just a mountain of meaty <laughs> troll muscle out here looking for a friend, cracking skulls, crushing balls. It's getting more gaggy. Like, Tina Bone Meal. You haven't missed a Tina. beat, though. You fucking had that shit memorized and dialed. Tina Bone Meal. Tina Bone Meal. I'm getting closer to the original voice that I floated by Ben like a year and a half ago that he told me was problematic. Uh, I'm just kind of like... <laughs> Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. Don't let don't let him change you. No. I won't. I won't. I'm a. I think I've kind of like found a good balance for Tina's voice. Yeah, it's really the difference between I think three beers and four beers with Dan. That's where the change. I'd, I'm on number. <laughs> well, I went to a brewery earlier, so I'm on like beer five. There oh, you, you go. fucking asshole! I'm I'm only on my first beer. I'm gonna get a second one in a few minutes. A little information I wanted to spread. Tina had mentioned a little bit about some of the skills that she'd improved yeah. earlier. Mm. Uh, we now have John also skilled up. Yes. Yeah. And Tina fully as well. So I just wanted to go through that with everybody because I want to make sure everybody knows. Unless you guys want to like hold some secret. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you want to do. Yeah, lay it out, Ben. So John Anderson had 25 good karma. He spent 11 on... Good boy. He added biotech. Biotech rating okay. three, which is basically like first aid kind of. Oh, shit. Here's the thing. What I realized about old Johnny boy. What'd you realize? 
He likes to get in there. He likes to scrap. He likes to be the first one in and the last man out. He's an OG player. Yeah. He plays hard and he works hard. So the problem <laughs> is he gets injured a lot. Never goes to the hospital. <laughs> Mostly it's out of selfish self-preservation. He wants to be able to heal himself. Yeah. But if he can heal others... I guess that's something he could do. That's why he's got a best friend who got into crystals, John. Come on, man. Well, the yeah, Reiki. but your Reiki stuff is never... I mean, it, We haven't even tried it yet. It might work. Yeah. It, it might, might work. work. I don't know if that's going to be allowable. Target number 30. We'll see. <laughs> but I just was sick of it. I'm sick of the healing in this game, and I want to try and tip the scales. I, I also imagine John taking like a very, very basic, like either like Boy Scout or like... Or CPR like a, class, yeah, yeah, like a fucking lifeguard class, and it yeah. like it like came back in one of his like crazy fever dreams and like his in his dojo. Boba Fett had like that little like healing chamber thing that like I'm thinking like Matrix. Like I just downloaded. It. I'm like I know oh medics. I know paramedic <laughs> now. Do you you just like do surgery on your own abdomen like in uh, Prometheus. 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 Oh yeah. A lot of people don't like Prometheus. I really actually like it. So it was cool. Crucified, cool. whatever. No, I don't give a cool. shit. No, come on, cool. Ridley Scott. Anything by Ridley Scott's fine in my book. John's other attribute he raised was his quickness up to six. He spent eleven karma to raise Why? his quickness to Why six. Why did you do that? You Let are the quickest motherfucker be like on the planet. A cat. Let me tell Let me you why. John wants to be like a cat. He wants to be like a coked up cat. <laughs> it affected raising his quickness because he also has yeah. uh, cyberware that made his quickness actually a seven and his enhanced quickness to seven. <laughs> what the fuck? It also raised his reaction to now five. <laughs> And improved to nine with his fucking reflexes, with his wired reflexes. I'm fast as fuck now. Dude, you're like a time traveler now. Like, you're and like, his, what, it, oh yeah. no one can touch you. His combat pool has increased to six. Fuck yeah. All I can say is I hope that John and Tina don't find themselves in an octagon again anytime soon because I well, do not want to face Well, it's funny because Ben was like, Ben John was like, that kind do of you want to put, he was like, do you want to put points towards intelligence? I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you slapped me when I said when I asked. <laughs> John gets quicker, but he doesn't get smarter. So John has three good karma left after all that. And, okay. But that was a pretty hefty haul. Well played. Well played. Tina Bone Meal, you raised your throwing weapons up to three, as we discussed. I did, because I could never hit anything with a throw. I always had to just kind of like toss it and like a, hope a grenade went off somewhere in the vicinity. Yeah. The grenade tossing always made my asshole clinch because yeah. I was afraid you were going to roll those snake eyes. Um, We've been pretty smart so far with the upgrading, am I wrong? You're real shadow runners. We're real shadow runners. So you spent six karma to bring your throwing weapons up to three. You also spent four karma to bring your firearms general skill up to two from one. Up to two, yep. That way I can, if someone asks me to shoot from a crow's nest with a sniper rifle, like in last episode of season one, I may actually be able to hit something. Uh, Attribute wise, you raise your charisma up to three by getting your teeth cleaned, as we discussed. I did. And your willpower (laughs) to four. Just in case some fucking magic comes bearing down again, because I don't know what Ben has in store for season two. Wait, can you go back to the teeth cleaned? <laughs> Tina got her teeth cleaned, and she did some winking and handshaking while we were buying shit. He raised it, her charisma <laughs> up by one point. With sack gagger. Sack gagger, yeah. Sat, yeah, with Randy sack gagger. Oh, my God. When you raise your willpower, Tina, just I want, I went through today and figured this out. Yeah. That actually raised your combat pool to six as well. What? Ah, really? Yeah, because your combat pool is your intelligence, your quickness, and your willpower added together divided by two. Well, thank God Ben knows what the fuck he's doing. There you go. You're like, and the sheen from your white teeth is blinds and stuns your opponents. This sounds awesome, but really Ben's just going to make season two twice as hard, so it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, maybe. Like, we'll see. Yeah. Isn't that how D&D works yeah. in any of these tabletops? Yeah. You upgrade and then everything gets harder. Oh, and the one other thing I want to say, we talked about it last episode episode or two episodes ago tina has a four in mixology oh yes let me add, <laughs> let me add that maybe a six maybe a six. ben and christian are coming out to colorado in about one week fans and we are going to uh mix some cocktails and they're going to decide whether or not i have a four or a six in mixology. <laughs> sweet i didn't know yeah. that was on the table awesome well hey let me get you guys caught up on where we're at because it's been a little bit let's do this thing Last session, Tina and John duked it out in the octagon. The no-holds-barred cage fight battle royale at Runnerfest. The two defeated the competition ultimately came down to one-on-one, where pent-up aggression and old grudges were vented out in the open. John emerged as the victor, barely. But when he refused to kill Tina, they were both thrown out by the throng of unhappy yes. spectators. <laughs> yes. 
It was then revealed that the reason you were putting the octagon in the first place was because of Deadbolt, who you fucking fucked over, Tina. Fucking Deadbolt, that's right. When you threw the Jessica run. Yeah. She entered you into the octagon. And she entered you. Yeah, she entered you. She <laughs> pegged you hard. She did. She fucked with Rory or something, yeah? Rory had entered you guys into the raffle, and she had fucked with the system and switched you guys over into the octagon. Oh, because she's a fucking decker. Yeah, she's a decker. Right. And then Rory came to the rescue at the end and shot her right in the fucking face, so she's not a problem Shot anymore. her in the face. What also happened, just reversing back to the first episode of the season, Lady Landline. Tina's ex-love of her life girlfriend from Portland. You call her Leah, I call her, uh, Tina calls her Leia. Leia Bear. Leah, you know better than me, I suppose. <laughs> I, no, I, just, I think, I think. You fucked her. I think it's funny if Tina just like, is it Leah or is it Leia? And Tina's just like ignored the fact that it's actually Leah and she just calls her Leia I and she just that. can't get over it. Yeah, it's awesome. She encountered John Anderson at the meet up, meet and greet and they banged in the bathroom. So <laughs> Tina yes. and John are now Eskimo br- siblings. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I think it's okay to call them bros. Eskimo bros. Eskimo yeah. bros. For sure. In the octagon, you guys duked it out. Tina fucking crushed John's hand to fucking dust. Yeah. Which is awesome. And then John went on to beat Tina within an inch of consciousness. Oh my God. You're right. <laughs> Just you, slapped the shit out of him. After she took his limp hand and slapped him with it. We didn't know what was going to happen. Which I was is afraid one obvious. of us had to die. Like, I was ready to build a new character. We didn't guys. know. We were pushing each other. Farther than we've ever pushed. That was some stress. <laughs> I put some stress on the players there. That was that was fun. There will be no combat for six episodes, so <laughs> settle in for some exposition, fans. So let me get you guys back into the world, okay? Let's do it. That's what happened. And now, John, Tina, yes. you smell disinfectants as your eyes open lazily. There's, it's a lot of haze, and it's foggy and blurry. And you look around, yeah. and you're in... A somewhat sterile room. And you can see across the room from each other, you're both sitting on, like, basically little hospital beds. Shit. There's a little room between the two of you. Can Tina be in the tank from, like, the second Star Wars movie? Sure. The Empire Strikes Back. She's, like, (laughs) in the water tank. She wakes up, and she's just, like, got a thing in her mouth, and she's floating in the fucking (laughs) fluid. And like You are both (laughs) floating in opposite tanks, staring at each other through the glass. Tina got to slap the shit out of her so bad, she's got to be in the Mark Hamill tank. Tina, you're looking like the German kid in Willy Wonka. You're wedged in this tube. (laughs) (laughs) like pinned shoulder to shoulder in this fucking glass tube awesome the liquid drains from the tubes and the glass raises and you both are just kind of like you're weak as you fall to the floor and the the respirator breathing tube pops out of your throat you gag and retch onto the floor perfect (laughs) and you hear Millie go Hey there, Wake. Hey there, Wake. Okay. He, and Roy, oh, oh, thank God. Someone get me out of here. <laughs> Tina just starts banging on the fucking glass of this tank and just fucking punches it. You're all right. You're all right. Fucking Rory. Fucking Rory. John, it wasn't my fault. John. It's I, always I, your fault, I, damn it. I, I just, you're right. Uh, you're right. He's, it's, it's, he's, now he's, Rory, it's, <laughs> come use those claws and slash me out of this fucking box. Get me out of here. I got rid of the claws. I got rid of the claws. Oh, really? something, the doctor was telling me something about how like the, the, my bones oh, and shut my, up? my muscles are too small and the nerve receptors weren't matching correctly. <laughs> Quit your blathering. <laughs> And, uh, and Millie says, all right, everyone, just take it easy. You're probably a little discombobulated. It's all right. It's been a little bit of time, been a, been a bit of a week. A week. But you guys are all patched up now. You can, you can actually, you know what? You're fucking shitting on Rory. You can thank him. He paid for your healing. A week. Who's been taking care of Bitsy? <laughs> Who? Bitsy. <laughs> Considering you fucking caused us to be here in the first place, I'd say it's a legit do. And you hear somebody go, oh, they're up. Who's that? And and you hear just like wet slapping as this big, doughy, pale, what? fat, what sweaty mass of a human walks into this room and goes, Okay, take it very easy. Take it very <laughs> this is a, easy. This is a very, a very suspect accent, but I like that you're going. <laughs> Johnny walks over and he says, Be very careful. Your hand is not fully healed. And he picks you up. He helps lift you up. And you have the, it's the sweatiest hands you've ever felt, like lifting you up. Oh, and my you're God. Staring right into this doughy face. His face oh is so fat. God. 
He could barely see his eyes, beady eyes poking through. He's picked, he picked John up? Yeah, he's lifting. He's very strong. He's very big. He's oh about like God. six, he's like maybe uh, six and a half, seven feet tall. John's getting uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Emily goes, it's all right, just take it easy, all right? This is, this is Moist Larry. Moist Larry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the name. <laughs> Moist Larry, he's a, he's a chop doc, all right? He's a ripper doc. He's got a chop shop down here in, in the Barrens. He's the closest doctor I knew. For the price, you can't beat him, all right? They took good care of you. You're all healed up, John. No. Yes, I took care of you. Yeah, I took, I did a lot of... <laughs> I wish the fans could see Ben. It had to do a little, a little choppy chop, but once I got the... the, the Wait, the, is it Asian or, or Cogni or, or like You can't LA. tell. You can't tell? <laughs> he doesn't know. Fat Larry doesn't know. He's definitely Caucasian. Like, he's he's super doughy white. He looks like he hasn't seen sun in his entire life. He looks like the Michelin man got soaked in a sink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Moist Larry. Your hand might not be fully calibrated yet. And you can look down, you see your hand is fucking metallic. It looks like the Terminator hand. It's a cyber hand. Oh, fuck. Hell yeah. Because Tina crushed it? I'll at least be able to crush a beer in it. At the yeah. very least, crush a beer. Oh, nice. I want John to be like using all, like his face is completely blank because he's using every <laughs> single amount of his energy to give the guy the finger with his, with his hand that he can't oh, control. Oh, stick the Terminator <laughs> finger? <laughs> yeah. All oh, credit him as a work is working. Uh, it's just one minute. He's like, now hold very still. Uh, hold, uh, hold. <laughs> <laughs> now hold very still. And he goes, very <laughs> quick. <laughs> You see him concentrate very hard, and somehow even more sweat soaks out of his pores over his face. He goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you see shimmering in the air and you feel tingling around your wrist oh, as your flesh around the metal starts to mend and heal. He goes, Ugh. What is this, fucking magic? What the fuck is this? I know you're testing around magic, John. Just take it easy. He's a whale shaman. No. He's a whale shaman. Get the fuck away from me. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I wish I love that the fans can't see anything Christian is doing. It's all lost. Everything is lost. The physical comedy is not translated on podcast. Millie gets between John's grasping cyber hand and Moist Larry and he pushes him away. He says, He's like, he's like, Moist Larry, give you just just give us a minute. Give us a minute. I wonder what the stats on this hand, dude. Uh, John's cyber hand doesn't actually have any stats to it yet. It's basically just a replacement. It's a straight replacement. It's gotta have some kind of strength. It's gotta have something. He hasn't paid for that yet, but he can upgraded it in the it's it's just a replacement right now i can definitely crush a beer can top to bottom yes oh top to bottom for sure you don't have to stop on that shit you can just do it i'm I'm not gonna be ripping like fucking safe doors off with one hand but i can i can crush a beer can come on more than most (laughs) men more than most men i tell you you crush a beer can absolutely if john drank beer if john drank beer exactly i laughed listening to one of our episodes where you're like John doesn't drink beer. He, he's just just cocaine. He's a square. And I laughed yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's, he's a square. square. He's a square. Exactly. He only ordered a beer once Once when he went to the improv class. That's the improv true. show. It was desperate. And he needed it. And he needed it. <laughs> <laughs> so Millie walks over and says, all right, Tina, how, how you feeling? You should, be, you should be all right as rain now. I'm tired. I'm tired, Millie. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. You guys took a fucking beating in there. It's all over the fucking Shadowlands. And he picks up a fucking, there's a trid video of you guys fighting, and you see the part where John's broken hand slaps himself in the face. <laughs> and he's like, that one, a lot of people are talking about that moment. That was pretty crazy. This gets us out there, though, right? Oh, there's a lot of exposure. What are my parishioners going to think? <laughs> Oh, oh, is it? I don't know about that, but the woman that like your lady friend and her two uh, lackeys or whatever they were, they, they went back to your apartment. So uh. I'm ruined. <laughs> God damn it, I'm ruined. The emotion, all because of that little fucking shit, Rory. The emotion from John is shocking, Millie. He's never seen you emote so much. <laughs> He's like, no, hang on, John. I remember, He's like, Rory didn't do it. I, well, I might want an explanation later, but who this dead bolt person was, I don't remember who uh, this person uh, was. Uh, John, 
I gotta be honest here. This one's on me. No, no, it's gotta be Rory's fault somehow. I fucked it up and came back and it bit us right in the ass, John. Stop, Tina. Just stop. I've got a lot to apologize for and I just don't know where to start. Stop. But... Just stop. It's definitely Rory's fault. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, all right, well, I was talking to Moist Larry. He said it's time. You guys can leave now. You guys are fully healed. <laughs> And, and you can thank Rory, by the way. He paid for your fucking treatment. Paid in full. Rory? He actually won the raffle as well. <laughs> no, he did. He did. Yeah. Where you run the 75 grand? Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I, I guess it, it was it was kind of- fucking raffle? Are you fucking kidding me? It was kind of bittersweet news, uh, you know, when I saw what was happening in the- <laughs> All right. Well, you're taking us out to dinner, Rory. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, guys, I, I, haven't, I don't Jesus. know if I told you this, but I was working in the Turtleneck Bay Marina restaurant, and I've been making really good cash. If you guys want to come down there, I'm sure that they'd let you guys in. We, we could prepare you a really good meal. I don't want anything prepared by you, but I will eat at Turtleneck Bay. John, it's Turtleneck Bay. We got to get in there. Turtleneck, whatever. Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> The restaurant's actually called Figaro. John, he'll get us right in. He'll get us right in. It's hard to get in there. Yeah, you just go, go to Figaro and you just you say, I know Rory. I know Rory. What the hell is happening? How long was I asleep? <laughs> What's going on here? It's only been a week, John. A week? Now listen. Who's running my operation? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. We can get you we can get you back home. You need to get back home? I can get you can, we can ride with me. I can get you a ride back to your place. I'm Both starving. You. Let's go to Rory's fancy restaurant that somehow he works at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you guys get in Millie's car. First, we're getting in that shit box. Where's her scoot at? Where are we? Where are are we? We're not at Runner Fest anymore. Obviously, we're uh, all right. You're at the Chop Shop. All right. It's a fucking ripper dock. It's it's Moist Larry's place. Moist. It's over here in the Barrens. It's the closest doctor I had. John was fucking bleeding out from an artery in his leg. Tina, you were half co fucking conscious. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's the best I could do. Millie, Millie. In all seriousness, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I, we're a team. We're a team. Let's not go that far. But of course, no. You. You're, you're my boy. I'm your. I'm your fucking fixer. Millie, stop. I'm your fixer. Millie, stop. You're Millie, stop. Team. We're like Millie, glue. Millie, stop. Thank There's you. <laughs> Millie, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's, you're like regretting thinking him now. <laughs> he walks you to the front desk of this place, and you see, you know, there's, there's a bunch of like seedy looking people that also want discretion. They don't want anyone to know they're hurt. They got like fucking yeah. bullet wounds. They've been waiting to get seen by him for like fucking hours. Shit. It's all grimy in there, and it's like, yeah, like hospital lighting, you know, like really fucking harsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are people on beds as you pass by that, like, you're pretty sure maybe you're dead. Maybe they didn't make it. Yeah. And uh, you make it to the front desk, and he goes, Oh, you're, you're, you're leaving. You're leaving. <laughs> wow. Moist Larry. <laughs> and he says, Moist, by the way, problematic word, but not for moist. our fans. Moist. Oh, yeah. And our fans are. A lot of people hate that word. I embrace it. I love moist. Yeah, love me too. It. Perfect word. Perfect. You know, Rory walks over <laughs> and he says, It's like, you, you, will you be handling. This episode should be called The Moistening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Slippery when wet. Oh. Ripper duck, the moistening. Uh, you would, will you be covering all the rest of the expenses? <laughs> and Rory says, yeah, yeah, yeah just, uh, and he slaps down this fucking sick fucking like gold cred stick. What the <laughs> fuck is going on with Rory? What and the fuck he's like, is going on? Just put it on there. It's all good. I'm good for it. John's going to be like, are you Fucking what? What the fuck? I've been telling you, I've been I've been promoted to sous chef at the Figaro, so I've been making pretty good money. I mean, you guys, I'm just saying, you could come check it out. I could probably get you good. I get you guys as a bus boy, maybe work your way up. Jesus Christ, John <laughs> must get money from Rory. Mental note: <laughs> John, something's malfunctioning in John's fucking uh, throat. Uh, his, yeah. uh, and he's like, yeah. his thoughts are out loud. Yeah. He's like, Exactly. Voice recording to self. I hope I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Tina's looking kind of sexy. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Can't ever let her know. <laughs> Just for the record, John did not say that part. <laughs> so Rory pays for the rest of it, and you guys walk outside. Millie must have been expecting you guys to leave today. He's got the car pulled up. Tina, your scoot's fucking bungee cord on top of a shitbox car. Nice. <laughs> Zima's waiting also. She's like, are you guys ready? 
He's like, yeah, yeah, we got, we got John, we got Tina. We're ready. File in the car, Rory sitting on your lap, Tina. Does Tina fit in a car? She does in this one. You got like a shoulder in your head out the window, this fucking uh, thing. Yeah, I, like, For yeah, some yeah. reason, I'm picturing this thing as like an old checker cab. An like, old station The one wagon. that like the guy from Escape from New York drives around in. Like, yeah. They're huge. Okay. It's a huge yeah. vehicle. It's an yeah, old yeah, yeah, model yeah. AmeriCar. It's big. Got it. Got it. Got it. And uh, so he's like, all right, where are we headed? You guys taught me a restaurant. You told me maybe your apartment. Like, what, what, what do you want to do? What, where are we going here? Food and champagne. <laughs> Staff. What he said. All right. Rory starts giving directions to the... And it's taking so long, he's missing... He's giving you the worst directions. You finally make it over to the Turtleneck Bay. You roll up, and it's all familiar to you guys. You guys went into this fucking place. Is this the same place we were at in season one? Yes. Where we did the yacht run? Yeah. You got Rory a job there. Oh, that's why... <laughs> okay, that's why he's there. there. He's like, he's moved up the ladder Did there? you ever release that fucking podcast, dude? I will have before this. I will have oh before Oh, my God. This. Has Dan listened to it yet? No. What is it? No. What is oh, it? Oh, it did. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Is it the last you'll time see. on? What is it? Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. No, what no. the fuck? Why you guys got fucking Easter eggs for me? What's going on here? <laughs> I kind of like that, actually. It's <laughs> <gonna> be sweet. <laughs> I like it. You're gonna I love like it. Surprises. You're gonna love. You guys it. rock into this place and it's fucking fancy. Like you guys saw it like in the, during the off hours before the dinner hours opened up. Yeah. As you walk in, it, like it's still a little bit early. But let's say it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. This place is just about maybe an hour before opening. Rory goes like, "All right, guys, just just like wait here." And I'll, I'll, I'll. You guys walk into like the fucking immaculate lobby of this place, and and Rory nods to the fucking finicky uh, host behind the fucking, fucking desk and Rory. I'll be right back. What you, you guys, I mean, you know, we're kind of at the mercy of whatever they're cooking. You know, it's it's a five-star restaurant. It's, you know, so <laughs> if, if, whatever they have, I can bring back. <laughs> Is that all right? Anyone got like an allergy to like, like, like shellfish or anything? Or, or, nope. No. All right, nope. all right. John, John needs food. John need food. <laughs> he walks over and goes into the back room and he comes back about 15 minutes later, and he's just got a tray full of bags with different kinds of food. It smells fucking amazing. It's like the high-end Tupperware. Oh, we're getting it to go? Yeah. That's awesome. Because I can't stick us around. I can't keep us around. We gotta keep moving. <laughs> I want to get us on this run. So, I love it. Yeah, so you guys bring this food in, and uh, uh, John, what do you want to eat? It's in these bags. He's brought like he's brought like four times is more food Is it real than... food? Is it real food? Or uh, yeah. Is it... There's like this is, real meat in this shit too. This is high end, like real food. This is five star restaurant. Oh shit! Dude. All right, John's gonna be like cracking a lobster claw and like drinking the water, like the ocean water that comes with it, and like yeah. just <laughs> like brine. fucking the brine and just being like. No, no, and you're all sitting no, in Millie's no, car no, with like no, your like no, that. No. <laughs> You're in Millie's car <laughs> with that weird thing where your knees are up really high because you're like trying to eat like on your knees with this fucking amazing food. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> and he's gonna have like champagne like in a fucking <laughs> plastic like wine box, yeah. like like yeah. just like drinking the bag of champagne. Yeah, he brought boxes of wine and he brought full bottles of champagne. Yeah. What do you get, Tina? All right, so Tina's gonna be honest with you guys. I, uh, Tina's got gout, if you guys remember from, from the first episode of this <laughs> series. So she's like looking around her and she's like, she sees all these fucking rich people, like people like snacking on 24 ounce T bones and fucking real butter drizzling over the top of them and just like olive oil fried, uh, 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 Brussels sprouts. I, Brussels sprouts. She's like, I'll have, uh, I'll have a bubble water and, uh, just some some seaweed sushi with some rice, and uh, and uh, that's all. Simple. She can't do it. She can't she do anything herself. fatty. She like she's like the, my foot will start acting up, John. I don't want to get into it right now, but I it's a, it really starts to bite, really starts <laughs> to bite into the left foot, into the heel. I, I overdid it a few weeks ago. Um, I'm okay. I'm leaning out. I'm leaning out. Tina, overdoing it is just part of my life. You know what? You know what? Bring me one of those 24-ounce T-bones, and uh, my friend John here, I think he'd like to take it. Why do you take it? Rare? Blue rare. I want it bloody, my friend. Bloody. He'd like a blue rare 24-ounce T-bone. <laughs> Make it a heart stopper. Fuck it. You only live once. And he goes, and he, hey, Tina, here's your sushi. And he brings the sushi, and the sushi falls right into a big fucking cup of, like, butter. Like, that was, like, for a... Like, <laughs> <he's> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right. That's it. I'll take a look at it. I'll take a gander. 
and it's like I can taste it. I love how <laughs> Tina's concerned about gout, and like John's gonna have like a triple bypass. <laughs> like he's already like got like a fucking Tina bionic knows the heart, pain, man. like Tina, ready it's for visceral. it. It's visceral. It's visceral. She can taste it by looking at it, and she knows how much it's gonna hurt. Yeah, but John, like as unhealthy as he is, will probably outlive like every single person in this. Yeah, podcast. Tina's just fumbling with some chopsticks, trying to like pick little pieces of rice <laughs> out of the butter bowl, and just like. I know. want John to be using his cyber hand that he can't control and just be like halfway missing his face, like just yeah. food just getting smashed like just in lobster and like all over yeah, his fucking fully, beard. Fully yeah. shattering a lobster. Yeah, like, shattering lobster It's claws. been a whole week, so John's beard should be pretty full, I think. Oh, definitely. I'm just imagining too, like John like sucking lobster pieces and bits off the fucking metal fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So you guys fill up on like some of the most decadent food you've had. Tina, you're 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 resisting well, or you can roll willpower if you want to see. Yeah, I should. Well, I should roll some willpower. Roll yeah. my willpower. It is, it's four now. She upgraded to four. Four dice. Four dice coming your way. And target number is going to be. We're gonna say how much does Tina love rich food? Oh, dude, she she developed a total vice for it when she was in the jungle because she never really had any of it for several years before that. So it's a fucking addiction. Like it's oh cocaine. shit. Okay, so we're gonna say target number five. It's challenging. Target number five. Four dice. Two ones and two threes. That's a fail. So you... She eats it. There's a full lo- split lobster tail with butter fully... like a Tina just a, is just like picking through like the rice grains with some chopsticks and she's just like gets really fucking frustrated. She's like, ha, ha, and she's pissed off and she fucking throws her chopsticks across the room. She grabs a lobster off John's plate and the 24-ounce T-bone and just, just buries her face. And, just motorboats that shit. I and mean, like, lobster's pretty fucking... Lean. She eats the whole fucking lobster shell and all, and then she just starts fucking taking bites off that twenty four ounce T bone, and she just the buried. T-bone. She's, it's been a week since she's eaten, and she's fucking starving. Yeah, <laughs> she goes for it. I love it. Hell yeah. We're gonna have to roll later for some. We'll gout see if damage. that affects you. Yeah, some gout damage. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Gout damage. Gout damage. Uh, I gotta ask Tom down about gout damage in the next. <laughs> yeah, let's get that in the game. <laughs> Are you looking for a D&D podcast for the dark side? Something more like Game of Thrones and less like Monty Python? Tale of the Manticore is part dark fantasy audio drama, part solo D&D RPG. There's no plot armor here. The dice make all the important decisions. Join me as I resurrect the excitement, wonder, and emotion of old school D&D. Made for a mature audience, Tale of the Manticore is both a fiction and a game. It's the story where chaos rolls. So Millie, he's uh, he's finishing up his his meal as well. The car reeks of like seafood. He's eating like a lobster bisque, and he's <laughs> it's all in his fucking like facial hair and shit. All right, so all right, so now where where where, where to, guys? Are we going to John? We're we going to your apartment, Tina. Let's go back to my place. I need to check on Bitsy, and I got a few things I need to look in on. <laughs> That's exactly what I didn't want to hear. But fuck it. <laughs> Someone's going to check on my fucking parishioners. <laughs> parishioners. So Millie, he drives you over back to, to Tina's place. So John, I know you've, have you been, to, you've been to Tina's place before. The garage. I can't, I can't see them like this. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> He's been, before he he's goes seen. back to his web of lies, his fortress of lies. <laughs> Sucking on fucking lobster and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With a fucking bionic hand. He's all beaten to shit. <laughs> And you're sopping wet from the fucking liquid from that tank. Yeah, he can't, like, go, he can't go back there. He <laughs> thinks he needs to go back there, but he can't go back there. <laughs> so you're in May Creek, uh, which May is Creek? right south of Council Island on the uh, Bellevue side. But it's in a really bad area of, well, it's in the lower class. It's a sea level. It's a bit desolate. Yeah, it's a bit sparse. Dilapidated factories yeah. around your apartment, whatever. As you yeah. roll up, Millie, he's unnecessarily nervous for his car. His car's a shit box. Like, no one's going to touch this thing, but he's kind of like locks it and puts it. He gets like a fucking, like, what is it called? The bar? What was it called? The, um... He's got a boot. He's got a boot on the wheel. Yeah, yeah he, he puts, puts a, a boot, boot on, the wheel. on it. So, Tina, you're able to unbuckle your scoot off the hood of his car. And uh, you're right in front of your apartment building. Okay. Yeah. We'll say Rory. We left Rory at the restaurant. He stuck, stayed behind and his ship was starting. So. so we got John, Tina, and Millie. And Zima. And Zima. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tina's kind of in a hurry because she's kind of worried about Bitsy. So she she grabs that scoot off the top of the car so fast she just Who's snaps Bitsy? the elastic band. Bitsy is Tina's pet cow. Veal cow. <laughs> 
<laughs> a veal <laughs> calf, fuck? But, but getting bigger, but getting bigger, well fed. And, I don't remember uh, this at all, but keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Tina's in a hurry because she doesn't know if Bitsy's had water or food in like a week. So she rips the scoot off the top, throws it over her shoulder, and like goes in the bottom <laughs> floor of the factory. She doesn't go into the garage because that's where her boat is. But her the factory is where Tina lives on like the third floor. And so they go in. There's a canonically, there's a Ghostbusters pole. That's how she gets down yep. from her apartment. Down Amazing. The bottom. Yeah, yeah. So she like runs in the door. There's like no locked doors there on the bottom because it's an abandoned factory. And you guys can just kind of follow as you go. And she comes in uh, um, <laughs> and runs up the stairs and into her apartment, unlocks the door. And it's a fucking mess. Like, Bitsy has made a mess. And But she got into the fridge. She found out how to open the fridge. And, like, the sink is running. And uh, Bitsy's just been drinking out of the, the, the <laughs> wow, sink. Wow, good and for Bitsy. Some fucking smart, yeah. 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 yeah, she's, she's super she's smart. She's problematically smart, as, as anybody with a pet of any kind would know. And Tina's just fucking relieved. And she just kind of slouches down on the couch, just passes out. <laughs> and she's got kind of like a food coma going on because she munched on that T-bone and that lobster and... And she's Bitsy's and, got like a direct link to like an AI. Bitsy's over in the corner, just kind of like laying on like Tina's trampoline. I don't know. If I like I, how I call her Mitzi, but her name's Bitsy. John should keep doing that. John yeah. needs to call her Mitzi. And Tina left the front door open, <laughs> just, and I assume the rest of the crew come up up uh, into the apartment. <laughs> As you walk in, there is Russian. Just scrawled all over the walls. Really? Of your apartment? Is this news to Tina or no? Yes. Okay, and you just hear you hear muttering. Is this the vault uh, from what from your bedroom? And as you walk in there, you can see the vault, and he's he's like fucking figuring shit out. Fucking vault. Nice. He's awake. Obviously, he was taking care of Bitsy. That makes more sense. Tina's more relieved now. Kind of. You're you're kind of worried more about him now. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he looks crazy. I mean, he's covered in like Tina. Only Tina would be relieved. When there's like Russian written in like blood like all over the wall and she's like she's His like Oh blood. that that make oh thank God Bitsy's okay. He says, You're back. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, it's been a few days. So I must be like, can I just enjoy my fucking lobster for a second? God There's no time. There's no time. Oh, you fucking Russian asshole. He grabs you, Tina, and he goes, That fucking Motherfucker! What is it? What is it? The vault? <laughs> <laughs> the vault, though. I love the, the the vault. Who is it this time? Fucking bastard! Fucking Zupaloni! He fucking double time fucked me. <laughs> Zupa? He double time crossed me. He <laughs> double like, time your crossed eyes me. rolled back when you did that. You're like fucked. Me. He double time crossed me. He fucked me so hard. He fucked me so hard, this fucking <laughs> cock up my ass to the tip. Come up my lips. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. The vault, what are you talking about? What did he do? He gave me a hug and then he double crossed me, Tina. <laughs> he hugged you. <laughs> <laughs> Tina trying to piece it together. <laughs> He's like, but I have. The fucking carpet pincers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking A. Fucking A. <laughs> he says, uh, he fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> he double fuck, double cross <laughs> fucked me. Both ends. <laughs> double penetrator fucked me. He double dutch. He double dutch fucked. But double dutch oven. He double, fucked me. Double, double, <laughs> double, triple, quadruple penetration. <laughs> fucked me in both holes. Quadruple. He got him in the fucking ears. <laughs> He said, he Russian told me. And you see. <laughs> <laughs> he says, but I, but I have it figured out. <laughs> and he points to the walls. He's fucking crazy right now. He's like. <laughs> and he points to the walls. I love how season two is just fucking weird. It's so weird. John's got a fucking like, he's cuckolding people. We got fucking. <laughs> Tina with gout. Oh my god. <laughs> this guy's just written in fucking <laughs> illegible Latin all over the fucking walls in blood. Well, Russian, it's in Russian. Right? It's in Russian. But... It's in Russian and it's not in blood, but it looks creepy still. Yeah. <sighs> the encryption. The encryption of the date in my head. It's uh, it's, uh, it's images. It's subliminal images. What does it mean? I don't know, but someone does not want this data delivered. And now Zupa wants me dead. He wants to kill me. He fucking double-crossed me. And we're going to kill him. I want to help me. We are going to kill him. 
Can you pay for that? The date in my head is worth quite a lot. I understand. John's like... <laughs> Jack! 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 We're talking... We're talking money. Uh, I need your help. I'm not a businessman. What happened? Businessman. Businessman. Uh, uh, is that what I am today, Johnny boy? And Millie, Millie leans forward and says, uh, I want you to know, you know, you do... You have a client, if you forgot... You've got a client that has, has a run. Uh, Leah? Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Leah Bear. Yeah, Leah. She, look, I, I, I don't understand. I'm not sure why. She didn't just come to us. Where is she? Why she didn't just come to me originally? Then he looks Millie, at you, where Tina. where is she? Uh, she said to call her when you guys are healed up. I, mean, I guess she's she's figuring out some information. But It's been like three hours. Why didn't you fucking tell us? <laughs> Well, you guys are hungry. What the fuck you want from me? All right, we'll got your food. We brought you back to your apartment. That's fair enough. <laughs> Tina looks over at John, and she's just like, uh, oh. I assume John has heard all this talk about Leia, and she's like, you uh, you want to give her a call, John? Or I mean, yeah, whatever, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's best. Maybe that, maybe you should give her a ring. Give me the number. I'm not sure if I still got it. She, uh. She changed her number. I, I don't have it. I don't have it. Her contact anymore. I. <laughs> well, I don't have it. Millie goes, I, I hear John. I, I have a number. And he, he, oh. he, he like discreetly walks past you. He doesn't want to to see it. He's like, hey, here's a, a number here. You can give her a call. You can figure out, you know, what the, the run is. And, um, As John uh, takes the number from Millie, Tina's yeah. going to go over with the vault into a corner of the room and, and have a little side chat. I'm going to dial. Hello? Who's this? Landline. Landline's Johnny Boy. Oh, hey. You, uh, I, I couldn't watch the end of that match. Uh, it's, how's Tina? She's all right. It was, uh, <laughs> it's been rough. <laughs> not gonna lie to you. I mean, again, I, I saw the trids on, uh, on Shadowlands, so I saw a little bit of it. Oh, so. man. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw just the highlights, you know, obviously. The yeah, the highlights. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How's your hand? Well, it's good. It's good. I'm fine. Imagine John thinking he's real cool, and then he realizes you saw him get slapped. I in crush the, hand. the phone. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like hands on like one of Tina's like chair arms. You just crush yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Hands good. Hands good. Eating lobster oh. with it. Eating lobster. <laughs> Cracking lobster. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Everything's I'm fine. Everything's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that. So uh, the job. Oh, yeah. The job. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, while you guys were getting healed up, I, I did a little digging, mm -hmm, and I got mm -hmm. some more information. So if you want to meet up, we can talk about details. And when would exactly would you like to meet up? As soon as possible. As I said, my brother is missing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We still had time to fuck, though, while your brother is missing. Just checking. <laughs> How about tomorrow? <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> it didn't take that long. <laughs> yeah, she was like, it didn't last long. Is that what she said? Is that what she said? Yeah, she says she says that to John. I don't see how that's my problem. Listen, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow would be good for us. Okay, we need to sleep it off. If you know what I Let's mean. Let's meet at. Uh, where do you want to meet? Wherever's groovy, baby. <laughs> how about we meet at the uh, <laughs> weird? <laughs> yeah, weird. It's a weird thing so, for John to say. Trying to be cool again. It's her fucking job. She should know where to meet. She says, uh, "All right, mainframe." Millie's. You know that is, right? Of course. Of course. Mainframe. We'll meet yeah. tomorrow, 2 p.m. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Landlon. <laughs> <laughs> he just feel <laughs> <so> fucking cool. <laughs> Say hey to, you know, uh, never mind. And she hangs up the phone. Click. Hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Tina. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Meanwhile, Tina is over in the uh, far corner. This is a massive fucking apartment. I'm not sure if we've been in Tina's upper apartment yet. A little bit we had. We, we were there with Orville Dubois uh, at the last Dubois. end of season one. <laughs> For a moment. It's not a normal apartment because it's like the third story of an abandoned factory. It's like two walls of a factory with a big full wall windows. And this thing is like... 40 feet long by 50 feet long. It is massive. Just big Damn. open concept factory space. But she's turned it into like rooms and a living room and a bedroom and a kitchen and all that stuff. Uh, and she's over in like the arcade section where she's got a bunch of arcade games lined up. <laughs> she's trying to make sense with whatever the fuck is going on with uh, the vault. Fucking Zupa want to kill me. The vault. I would never let him do that. 
But you're gonna have to make some more sense. This is a little bit scattered. There's fucking blood all over my walls. <laughs> I don't speak Latin, and I don't read Russian. None of this it's makes Russian. sense to me. I just, you're gonna have to tell me what it means. Maybe we can bring John over here. He's pretty sharp. But I'm here for you. I've been here the whole time. Okay, okay. <laughs> Dina, you were there for me. You looked out for me. I like that. I like it too. I think what first order of business is to try to extract the data from my head. Okay. I have some of the codes. I've written them, as you see. But it will take a soft touch. <laughs> <laughs> In the delicate nerve receptors of my brain to not trigger the cortex bomb. I understand. When we have the data, we have eliminated the need for Zupa to take me out, you see. I've thought it all out. If that's too dangerous, we go fucking kill Zupa ourselves, you see? Problem solved. Bing, bang, bang. Bing, bang, bang. I get it. Listen, I got an electronic skill of three if that's good enough, <laughs> but I doubt it. That's about the average. <laughs> that's about the average. It's a bit middle of the road, but I'm really good at fucking killing people. Look, I got somebody downstairs right now. We go down and talk to him. Maybe he can look into getting something extracted. Right now he's working on a side project for me. I think that's where we start. Bare minimum, we kill that motherfucker. Because you're my boy. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know what his accent is now. Thank you. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. He takes him by the face and like grabs him by the side of his fucking oh, sheets. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm gonna take care of you. Alright? I believe you. Let's go get John. See what he's got dialed in with Leia Bear. <laughs> Let's make our next move. <laughs> now, now the vault's confused. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> so the vault sort of just shuffles behind you as he follows you down the stairs. I'm imagining like you got like that, the boss loft where they have the windows they can look out over a factory floor almost. Like you have like yeah. that's your loft bedroom and you can see John down there on the phone and whatever, but you can't hear each other. Yo, no, I do like that. I like that like in Taxi where they go up this, like the old TV show Taxi yeah, go up yeah, the yeah. stairs is the overlooking thing. Yeah, yeah. That's where the arcade is in Tina's apartment. It's like a second tier thing. And so she comes down the stairs and as John's hanging up the phone with Leia Bear, kind of <laughs> shuffles up to John. She's just like, so how to... How is she, John? Uh, she's good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Does she sound healthy? Does she sound happy? Does she sound content? Does she sound like she's been making good choices? Does she, uh... Yeah, well... I, <laughs> she wants her brother back. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. What's his name, Ben? Thorber. And, and Tina, you've heard about him. You know that they have sort of an estranged... Yeah. Okay. It's a stressed... Uh, Has Tina met him? Tina met him? Yeah, you can tell me. You think you Tina's met him? Tina's never met him. Yeah. She's a, okay. Jeff Thurber, she's talked about him a lot. Uh, he means a lot to her. I've never met the guy. What you read on that? Uh, I, you know, I think we should help her, obviously. John, we gotta save him. John, we gotta do this for her. She's the most important person to her. And, and it would just, it would just break her. It would... Break her down to the bones, down to her core. We gotta mm -hmm. do it. We gotta yeah. do this, John. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? It's your job. I don't want to overstep. It's my job. I don't want to put myself out there too far. Tina, we're a team. I'm here for whatever you need. I'm here Tina, for whatever we're, you need. We're a team. We're in this together. We're deep, deep in this together. I think we uh, <laughs> we need to take care of this. You see Millie across the room. He, he he has a twinkle in his eyes. He's watching this interaction. He's like petting fucking Bitsy. <laughs> and he's just nodding like, yeah, yeah. Tina hasn't made a fucking sound. She's just like slack jawed staring at John right now. And she's just, we are a team, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're the only team I've ever had. Same. She doesn't even realize it, but her arms are reaching out. No, I'm not ready for that. And, and, okay, and let's keep on. they keep moving around John's body. Tina, don't push it. They're so long. She has a reach of one. She has a reach of one. It's right on her stat sheets. They, they like almost sneak around John. They're very long. And uh, like behind him. No, no. And like she's not even quite touching him yet, but she is encircling him entirely. Uh, uh, John's quickness, he like snakes out. Roll me a quickness, John. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta roll a quickness. <laughs> Shit. Against Tina oh, Stealth, yeah. Jesus We're going to say it's an average roll, but it's going to be plus uh, seven one is my from quickness. the 
roll yeah roll seven quickness and it's going to be a target number of six because it's holy like holy shit that's one seven quickness harder for is you and one easier for tina to touch you with her reach or seven dice target six yep what is it what'd you roll Zero successes. Oh, oh shit. Tina got that. <laughs> oh, oh. Tina's very slow hug just keeps. It's so slow. It's so slow. And she doesn't even really know what she's doing. She's like brings you in closer <laughs> and closer and like rests her chin on top of your head and just no. kind of like shudders oh. a little bit. Uh, but it's a very gentle, warm hug. Roll me a willpower, yeah. Tina. Willpower four. Target number four. Target number four, willpower four. Here it comes. No. One four. She got one four. You're able to keep your emotions in check. You're able to keep from, like, squeezing too hard. Yeah, not too hard. Just She rests her chin <laughs> and kind of her, her large, oh, no. uh, very masculine Adam's apple just kind of, like, tickles <laughs> his, you know, his forehead. Help. And she says, Chad. Millie. John, I have something I need to show Tina's, you. Millie's laughing. He's like, yeah, yeah. all right. There oh, we go. John, I have something I need to show you. What? No. Come with me. Oh, please, no. Millie walks oh. over and also does a hug on both of you, around both of you. He's like, this is right. We're a fucking team. And he's no. just. <laughs> if Rory gets in here, I'll fucking kill him. And the vault oh. comes up and hugs you from behind, Tina. He, Everyone's oh. hugging. She sneaks in right behind, too. Oh. <laughs> she, Tina ignores everyone else but John. And she says, John, we're going to save Thorber. And she looks back over her shoulder to the vault. She says, the vault, we're going to kill that fucking asshole. Okay, fine. We're going to kill them all, John. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're going to kill them all. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, she releases John, and she says, follow me. And she heads right to her, uh, her fireman's pole. Snaps around, looks at him, and just fucking disappears down through the floor. And you can hear it from down below. Says, "Come on down!" God damn it! And John slides down, <laughs> instantly <laughs> regretting all of it. It's like hard for John too. It's like it's like catching because you're so wet still from the fucking uh. tank. Like it's like. <laughs> 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 As John hits the ground, you're not actually on the first floor of the factory. You are in the basement level of the factory. You went all the way to the bottom, followed her to the bottom. I think it's funny if he hears, like, just hears Tina and the, like, all around him, like, John, John, come up, I'll leave it. <laughs> He's like, ah. He's like, you're scared. <laughs> it's dark down here. It's dank. She's, like, below ground level, so, and there's a lake next door, so, like, you're under the water level of it's like of a fucking schmeagle layer. It's dripping down there. There's, like, dripping sounds and shit. And, like, over off in the distance, maybe 40 feet away, you can hear just, like, these electronic, like, crackling sounds. It's, like, some bursts of blue light. <laughs> fuck. And you look over there, and there's, like, some electric sparks just, like, flying and shit. And you can just see Tina's big fucking bodice just kind of lumbering away from you. And uh, she's going over to where this electricity is kind of crackling over in the corner of the basement. John's, like, going to be like, what the fuck is going on down here? <laughs> Tina? Tina walks over to a table, puts on a, uh, a helmet, and flips it down over her face and walks over and starts talking to somebody who's down there with her. There's an old grizzled dwarf that stops uh, welding and puts his mask up and says, Hey! Well, yeah, I'm about ready! Where the fuck are we? How's it looking down here? <laughs> oh, it's looking real good. I think after just a little bit more work down here under the suspension... And he, he gets out, he, he's like, here, come look. And he, he grabs, Tina, he grabs one of your horns and pulls yeah. your head down. <laughs> and he's welding up underneath the thing. He's like, you see that there? Yeah, that needs it. to be, I, if I could just get a nice good bead across there, this will be, I think we'll get it in, a, in working shape. I mean, I wouldn't go. Is that a TIG welder or a MIG? Yeah, it's a MIG. But I think if it, but it might be a, a TIG MIG, you know, I don't know. I'm okay but, if you swap them. I don't really know how the fuck I'm doing yeah. when it comes to welding, but I just, I knew to ask. Trust me, there's no difference. Now, look, <laughs> I'm trying to, I've done this a long time. <laughs> I wouldn't take this thing on a joyride or anything just yet, you know, but I would take Dan it. just you, takes you, a big fucking hand and just lifts up the corner of the, uh, the vehicle a little bit that he's working on and just takes, gets a little better look. Yeah, that looks real nice. Now, look, I didn't open up the driver's seat too much. I mean, I wasn't sure, uh, you know, you're driving this. It's a little snug for a troll. I'm just saying. Don't worry about it. I'll make it work. All right. All right. And he, he's like, if you don't mind, uh, hey, hey, he waves to John and Millie. He flips his mask back down. He's like, I'm, I'm, I got to get this thing in pretty good shape by this afternoon. 
That'll work. You keep at it. Sorry to interrupt. All right. And he wheels back under, fires it back up. So in front of you, John, you see a big fucking van that's being worked on by this troll. What's his name? That's a dwarf. What's what's the dwarf's name? His name is, uh, his name's Condor. Condor. <laughs> and Tina turns to John and she says, we're going to let Condor get back to it, but, um... I just figured maybe uh, we could roll over and uh, talk to Leia Bear together. What the fuck is this thing? John, I... Uh, Where are we? John, Who's I, this guy? Condor? Condor is my chop shop guy. He's been working on a special project for me. Damn. Listen, I don't really know how to say this. I don't really remember what happened because there's a lot of back and forth and there was a this and that and there's been a lot of the time that's passed, but I feel like an apology is uh, in order and... I agree. <laughs> I feel like I let you down, John, and I just wanted to make things right because I've never had a brother. And I feel like if there was anybody that could fill that space, it's you. And I feel like I let you down, John. I feel like I let you down. And I, and I just, and I wanted to make it up to you. And I just, this is for you, John. This is for you. She turns back and she motions to the big fucking van behind her. We're cool. You mean it? Yeah. Keep the van. John, I'd keep it, but I can't fucking drive it. <laughs> it's, it's, for, it's for you, John. Condor wheels back out. He goes, I forgot to mention, uh, you know, I didn't see a data jack on your head. I mean, you're going to need a data jack to drive this fucking van. Tina turns back and, and makes eye contact with John. Jack me in. She turns to Condor and says, he'll drive this van. Goddamn right, I'll drive it. And what you're looking at, John and Millie is the equivalent of a Renault Fiat Eurovan, which is 25,000 new yen. Jesus. It's got a handling of four, a speed of 35 to 105. It's got a body of three, armor of zero. She couldn't afford anything else. Signature two and pilot is one. So what you guys are looking at in front of you is a V8 4x4 manual transmission restored 1979 Ford Club Wagon Deluxe. That thing looks sweet. And now this thing has got an 18-inch lifted suspension with 30-inch off-road tires on it. So it's Fuck fucking yeah. <laughs> beefy as shit. This could hit the mountains. Yeah. Now, the paint job is jet black, fresh paint job on it. It's got tinted windows. It's got pink undercarriage LED lights and neon blue headlights on it. Now, <laughs> you go to the back side of this fucking thing. It's got gold wing doors that lift up like the fucking DeLorean. Yes. That's awesome. In Back to the Future. It's got a black interior. It's got pink and gold accent lighting on the inside. <laughs> up front, it's got cockpit bucket seats then in pleather, not real leather. She couldn't afford real leather, obviously, in 2053. Sweet. It's got... Uh, <laughs> John. Now, sweet, sweet, nice. The back end of this thing, Tina pops the side gold wing door on the passenger side and it fucking lifts up. Take a look at this, John. I really want you to see this. This is fucking you nice. You go inside, and it's got two fold-down rear seats, removable back seat sofa seating, kind of like Boz's van. Now you look up front, and you can see it's got a rigger set up, so it's got a hardline jack that you can jack into. And that's got the baseline vehicle adaptation package. It's rigger control, which is $2,800, <laughs> which Tina splurged a little bit on. But it's also got the wireless remote adaptation package, which is 2,500 times the two body, which is 5,000 million. Fuck yeah. God damn. That means John can rigger into this fucking thing remotely. Anywhere in the car. He could be in the driver's seat, the passenger seat, he can be in the back. He can be outside of the car as long as he's within range. Fuck. And he can fucking drive this thing with his mind. That's some fancy shit, Tina. <laughs> it's also got an amphibious exhaust pipe coming off of the engine so they can go like <laughs> underwater up to like four Wait a minute, to five wait a minute. Feet. I can wirelessly connect You can to this wirelessly thing? drive this thing if you're like fucking driving behind it in a golf cart. There's remote control. This is a thing that existed in the 1992 version? Yeah. This yep. game? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. For riggers. Only riggers. Deckers can't do that. Tina can't do that. This is unreal. Riggers can fly drones and they can they can re yeah. re remote control cars. Fuck, I need to get a drone. The hood of this thing has got a shaker hood scoop Jeez. with a V8 engine intake shaker. sticking out the fucking hood. Oh, so it can shit. just it fucking rumbles, man. Now, it's also got a roof hatch <laughs> on top that's retractable. 
That missile launcher that Tina fucking bought, first episode of season two, the missile launcher, yeah. one anti-vehicle missile pops out of the fucking top of this thing. On the left side goal wing door, there's a slide out seat. It's kind of got like the Millennium Falcon kind of gunner cockpit thing where you can like Sick. fucking wheel around Damn. and shit. Above it is a mounted HMG 50 cal that Tina bought in that first episode as well Holy with the 100 fuck. round belt. Now, so like you pop that gold wing door, Tina can slide out on the fucking seat and shit, fucking yeah. gunner seat that shit. Millennium Falcon slash Ninja Turtles van. Yes. Fucking A. That's right. Damn. Slash A team van. Also, up front in the cockpit, there's an interactive console display for the roof mounted 360 degree rotating thermographic camera that Tina bought in episode one. Damn it, you're tying it all together. It also gives you the AVM targeting if the driver isn't jacked in. This is so a like, fucking unveiling of a sick rig. And in the back, of course, because Tina knows John, there's a wet bar. Oh my That's god. Sick. I'm imagining that it was actually covered this whole time while the guy was working on it and the he just like pulled, pulled off the fucking tarp off. that shit back and, and unveiled it. Tina, I'm, I'm almost speechless. <laughs> it's about as close as I get. John, you mean everything to me. And I can't wait to roll in this fucking hoopty with you. Then let's fucking get it on, Bomeo. Let's go save Thormer. Let's go see Lay Bear. And let's go crack some fucking skulls. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's kick some ass. That's amazing. That's awesome. I love that John has a fucking kick ass right now. Per Tina as an apology item from Tina. So you guys have two options here. I think it's funny if you make me apologize. <laughs> I'm like, I need to hear it. <laughs> you have two options here. You've got the vault who wants to kill Zupilioni or yeah. Yeah. take the thing out of his head. Or you've got this run with Leah, but she wants to meet you tomorrow. So it's up to you guys. Yeah. This time I want you guys to be able to choose. I mean, I think we have to help Leah now. I feel like Leah's in the mix. And like, I feel like that's the pressing issue. Plus, like her brother's going to die, right? Or something, whatever the fuck's going on there. So we don't really have time to waste. So I feel like Tina's vote would be we chase that down. Yeah. The vault, he stops. He's kind of skittish all of a sudden. He's like, oh, no, no, no. I, 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 Super Leone, he has a, all of his people looking for me. Are you kidding? You, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. He'll fucking kill me. <laughs> and he starts to get crazy again. The vault, you're safe here. You know that. Relax. Relax. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you lay low. We're off grid here. But you'll help me kill him. Of course I will. I'll rip his <laughs> fucking throat out. Jesus. Yes. Listen, you take care of Bitsy. You look after her. You keep her watered, you keep her fed, you keep her brushed. Make sure you brush her coat. <laughs> she needs that. I will take care of Beatsy. <laughs> you keep looking into this. We need more information. You have my phone number. Okay. You call me anytime you need. Okay, okay. Right now I need to focus on Leia Bear. Okay. I need to focus on John. Okay. <laughs> he like puts out his cigarette, lights up another cigarette, and just hobbles back away and scoops up a huge fucking brush off of a nearby <laughs> table and heads up to start brushing Bitsy. Tina walks over to, what's his name, Condor? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Tina walks over to Condor as he's finishing up, and she puts his hand on his shoulder and says, this is fantastic. You did a really good job. Hell yeah, this thing's fucking crazy. This is the craziest fucking man I've ever seen. Now, hey, like I said, don't redline it, all right? I don't think this beat will hold if you try to tear fucking donuts in this motherfucker, but it'll it'll drive. Break in the engine first thousand miles, I get it. John's going to get in it, Jack, in it as soon, <laughs> as soon as he starts and he's going to rev it to redline. <laughs> yeah, this Spit dude out. steps back. He's like wiping <laughs> oil off his hands and he's looking at his beautiful handiwork. And at that moment, you fucking do exactly the opposite of what he just said. <laughs> I just fucking dump the clutch. This thing fucking trembling inside the basement of this fucking factory. It's just fucking ripping. That V8 is fucking purring. It sounds like a fucking crack in this, this, this roar in this cavernous underbelly of Tina's apartment. This thing's fucking ripping. It rough. takes a little extra for Tina because she is a sex professional, but <laughs> she feels a little something down below. It gives oh, it's her a little, stirring her A little bit of tremble oh. in that quad muscle. She, uh, she can feel it. Auto erotic. She can feel it. <laughs> Auto erotic. God damn. John, you fucking roll over. You come by when your seagull doors opens up for Tina to hop in. Tina turns back to Condor, winks at him. She said, Happy in touch. You take care. <laughs> but I'm already I've already I'm already yeah. driving it. You like snatch the keys out of his hand as you drive by. You just and Tina Bastard. just fucking grabs onto that thing like a fucking pirate, steps into the back of that van, closes the gold wing door, and she says, 
I was gonna see you later, bear. Let's fucking smoke these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I like a weird, like a Mexican accent, kind of. <laughs> smoke these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Millie yells out at you guys, wasn't that supposed to be tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Pink Fohawk. You can check out new episodes every two weeks. Until then, we'd be hugely thankful if everyone listening could post about our podcast on Reddit or Twitter or leave a review on Podchaser or Apple Podcasts or even just share our show with a couple of friends. That'd be awesome. Thanks again for giving us your time. It's the most precious commodity any person has. Pink Fohawk theme created by Colin Rufino. You can find links to his website in the description below along with credits for other songs used in this episode. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time couple a little information i wanted to spread here you're oh, like i have yeah. liver <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah a very rare liver disease <laughs> sorry you can cut that out but it's funny if you just made i that waited to tell everyone i didn't tell you guys <laughs> you're like i'm dying we're like, like jesus oh, fucking christ <laughs> episode three of season two is ben's obituary yeah, yeah. um <laughs> You're like, this will be the final season. We're like, whoa, oh, what the fuck is this? Whoa. The doctor says any minute. Any minute. It could be any minute. Any second. <laughs> <laughs> any-